I have. I'm making hot cocoa. I have two hoodies. <laughs> oh my god! You can't be that cold. I'm not that cold. I'm just wearing one hoodie. Two hoodies. Two hoodies, Kairos. Oh, hello, chat. <laughs> hello. Here, here. No, it is a two-player stream tonight. Uh, our John... Our John is... Uh, unavailable tonight. <clears throat> he is sick. He's also ill. So... He's also tubular killer... Rad. Awesome. Sick and ill. But yeah. So it is just two player stream of Gugong, uh, which we have played two player already. I was hoping to try it three, but it was a lot of fun too, so I'm looking forward to it. Um I guess at the end of the game when we're doing scores oh, our volume is low? Okay. Yeah, our, our volume looks low. <sighs> Hot cocoa. The volume is low. <sighs> you bumped the game up on the I did. It's oh. all the way. Really? That's not the solution for everything. Yeah. The game is all the way. Oh, wow. Am I in camera? Hmm? Am I in camera? Is the mic in camera? I'm looking. You're not looking. You're on YouTube. <laughs> what are you doing? The mouse died. What are you doing? I'm trying to get to OBS, but when you put it, oh my goodness, you're not allowed to touch anything. <laughs> First time I touched the mouse, it stopped moving. This, wait, because you lift it. You're not supposed to lift it. Like, I don't lift it. Next, yes, I heard a thud on a table. Which means it was lifted. Okay, there. You're fine. Ah! Um, how are you? Alright, well, I was trying to get over to Reaper, but I can't seem to. Um, Reaper is not making any noise. What's happening? There's no master volume thing. Reaper! Yeah, uh, that I don't know. Uh. Huh. No idea. Oh, turn the. There's a little green thing all the way. Wait, what? No, all the way on the left of that box you had your thing in. I think it needs to be on. There's a red thing. Click the red thing, I think. Uh, turn it off. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Ah! It's a great stream. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why it's quiet. It used to be fine, but maybe I messed it up. <laughs> yeah, it I... looks. It looks weird. Were you doing stuff in Reaper? Um. Oh yeah. No, you need to switch it to Sunflower. Your channel. I think. How about that? I was using Sunflower sixty four for something else. Uh, can you email that? No. Sunflower 2? I thought it goes to Reaper device. Doesn't it go to Reaper device? No, Reaper goes to... I have no idea what you... I don't know what's happening in OBS right now. Go to OBS. OBS is just this. Okay. Well, it seems higher. I don't... I don't know. All right, let us know if we're any louder. Something is weird. We'll have to look at it later. Okay, well, we're probably gonna have it later. And we're live. Uh. Uh, an exciting thing we're doing. This is our first stream on the rug that 
is larger. Uh, the previous rug that we had for a while was big enough for the table, but not for the chairs. So every time you scooted your chair, you would like pull the rug up from the floor or like move it around or whatever. Or catch the chair. Or catch the chair, or it would, yeah. It's the little things in life. So now the rug is slightly larger, so that you can scoot your chair without like. Why is everything going under the, your chair? Why is the camera wrong? It's because it's not the right camera. Huh. Not any louder. To me. Okay. Uh, I mean, just boost the gain in Reaper, I guess. But Reaper's not doing its thing. Oh, you know what I can do? Uh, no. There we Yay! go! Yay! Turn off and turn it on again. There we go. Okay, are we better? We might even be a little loud now, but... Okay. Turn it off and turn it on again. That's what we do. Um... <sighs> I was doing Yay. pretty. I was doing pretty uh good today, as you all saw three hours ago on our um stream of me painting. And then I was making dinner, and then I was like done making dinner, and I just got like hit with just like palpitations and chest pain, which is the thing that I have. It's not unusual. It's just depressing because they still don't know what it's from. But um. So that's why I'm a little, like, uh, right now. Uh, and then Steve's just fighting coldness, apparently. apparently. <laughs> I'm, I'm not fighting a cold. I'm fighting the cold. cold. Yeah, he's fighting the elements, the weather of, of just, like, oh. the concept of being cold. Steve is fighting. Not fighting an element, because mm -hmm. that's parked outside. I'm fighting the elements. Um, I am going to release Tiffany's Pokemon. Itchy! Um, so tonight we're playing Gugong, which is designed by Andreas uh, Steding, Steding. Um, and it's published by Game Brewer, which is a French publisher, or Belgian publisher. I can't remember which, I'm really sorry, y'all. Um, but Tasty Mitchell Games is bringing it over. This game was also on Kickstarter not super long ago, um, where you could kickstart it for a deluxe edition, a la Tasty Mitchell style. But I don't know if Tasty Mitchell is really the thing. So, anyway, this game will be coming... To the States, from TC Menstrual, it's two, one to four players. Yes, there's a solo. So it's one to four players, and yeah, it's card-driven. Let's get into it. Steve and I have played it once, two-player, uh, and we both really liked it, and I didn't stir my hot cocoa enough. I stirred his hot cocoa enough. Oh, no, I didn't. What's wrong with my hot cocoa? You need to stir it more. Bring me a spoon. I need to stir mine more, too. I decided I want hot cocoa, like... Two minutes before we went live, so. Uh, um. <laughs> please release video of Steve fighting Element. <laughs> the car. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll be like that Street Fighter stage. Where you just you just go to town on the car and there's barrels and you're Could trying you to get a high it? score. Could that be the video? Is he's just cleaning? We, um. So to give away too much about our house, uh, we park under some trees. Because it's the only, like, parking we have. And, um. The trees, the trees like to do things to our car. And the things that are occasionally in the trees. Yeah, the birds like to do things to our car because they hang out in the trees. Anyway, we're playing Gugong! Um, which I might be pronouncing wrong. Don't care. Sorry, I do care. I just, it's really hard for me to care. Um, too many and I was, I think, is it two to five? Yeah, it's one to five players. Okay, I, I thought was it wrong. was one to five. Yeah, it's one to five. But the board is double-sided. So one side is for two, one, two, and three players, and then the other side is for... Four? Um, no, four and five. Mm. But because it does a weird... I've never seen... It does a, It has a weird way of folding. It also... Our board doesn't actually like to lay flat. I have to like make it work. But it's huge! <laughs> um, so we're going to see if we can get this to fit on camera. And if not, we're going to rotate it. It's so big it's listing. Hey, stop it. Um, stir your hot cocoa, boy. Um, so let's see if we can get this. Yeah, we can go a little bigger. Cool, there we go. That's totally reasonably in frame. 
Uh, yeah, that'll work. All right, cool. So the board is rather large. And like I said, for some reason, it doesn't it doesn't like to fit together, um, which is which is weird. But each player is going to get a player board, and the player color is in the little bottom corner. So pick the color that you wish. I am yellow, as always. Steve is blue, as always. Um, and then each player is going to get all of their stuff, which is their player color. So you're going to get a bunch of cubes, which are your servants or assistants depending on your view of feudalism. Are they feudalists? No. Uh, yes! It's a feudalist system, isn't it? I think, I think so. Um, um, most of the resistance was, anyway. Uh, so you're gonna get a bunch of stuff of your player color. Feudal. There's three dice. Um, then there's a bunch of little jade ovals. You're gonna put those... Um, you're going to take the jade, we'll start with the jade, because it's the easiest. You're going to take the jade, and some of the houses in this section have little circles that fit the little jades perfectly. Please don't mess with those cards, they're very specifically sorted. Oh, I just, um, I shuffled the whole thing. Anyway. No! Oh no! So you're going to put My karmic remor- reward. one of I the jade it. things on each of the little oh. circles, and then everything else you're just going to put in the center, like, pool area. There's a little fountain. It's a jade fountain, apparently. Uh, then... Sounds molten. Is, can you make liquid jade? Can jade become I, a liquid? I don't, most crystals can't turn to liquid, really. Yeah, can no, I don't think that's the thing. Okay. Um, we have the... They did, like, this little deluxe round marker um, at Essen when we got it. If you don't have that, you have a little black token. We're going to use our fancy one. It's little, it's metal, it's like pewter or something. I don't really know what it is. Um, and then there are two circles that have kind of a pattern on them. They're the first player token and the I'm gonna go first player token. The I'm gonna go first player token is silver and it's gonna go right there. Little spot for it, right there. Mm. And then um, you battle to the death to see who goes first. Uh, and also you're playing solo if you win. Because <laughs> it's a battle to the let, no. Let me see those. <laughs> um, so we'll figure out who goes first this way. Um, but whoever goes first is gonna get the thingy. I'm gonna just quickly. I go first. So whoever goes first is going to get the I go first token. Just put it somewhere near your stuff. It's to make sure that um, you get to go first. That's really it. Because yeah. you can take it. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing. Um, cool. Then there's a whole bunch of guitar picks. They're not actually guitar picks, but they look like guitar picks. I thought legit they were guitar picks. These are travel tokens. You're going to take all of the travel tokens. Split. All of them! You're going to put them face down, and you're going to randomize them. I'm just going to asterisk here. I say all of them, but there are some advanced ones in here, and if you don't want to play with the advanced ones, you can take them out, but we're going to play with the advanced ones. There's only like three advanced ones. They just have more involved stuff, but there you go. So you're going to randomize these, and then you're going to make them into stacks. Steve, can you just make them like a draw stack, basically? Yeah. Um, there's too many to make one draw stack, so just make a couple draw stacks. And then, Steve, you had one job. Okay, and then you're gonna fill in up here, there's little silhouettes that fit the guitar picks perfectly. And you're gonna put them in. Uh, um, there you go. And then you're gonna make sure that you have kind of an equal amount um, of these in draw stacks on the dark filled in parts of the board. Here, you can have those to put in yours. And then once you've done that, you're gonna flip them all face up. You could put them all face up the first time, but I feel like it's more random if you deal them face down and then reveal them. Um, More fun. Yeah, that's the word. Okay, so, while Steve continues that, 
and do the next step. So then you have these like eighth of a circle, I don't really know, maybe a sixth of a circle tokens that have on the back, they have a paintbrush and some ink stains. Do you see them? So what you're going to do is you're going to sort these by the number of ink stains. And if you were smart like me, you would actually just store them in bags by that. But these are the decree tiles. And so once you've sorted them, you're going to mix up each stack individually and randomly select two. And those are the two you're going to play the game with. So. So we'll have that one. And there's spots on the board that have little ink blots. And those will match the ink blots on the back. So you put two of the threes there. And then you put two of the twos there. And you do two of the ones there. Sweet. Okay. Uh, almost done with up. Now, deck of cards. There's a lot of cards in this game. You're actually not going to play with most of them. Unless you're playing a five-player game. So, the cards all look pretty similar, but in the upper right corner, up here, there's a little tiny symbol. And one of those symbols is a yin, a yin and yang symbol. Um, and... You're going to find that deck of cards, there shouldn't be that many, um, and you're going to shuffle them up. If you are playing with a copy from the first print run, there is a misprint in this deck. There are two number seven cards that have the orange icon, and there's only supposed to be one of these that has that, and then there, one of them is supposed to be a number seven with um, the beige pen and paper icon. So, um, they officially have been like, you can play with it the way it is, it's fine, and they'll be doing replacement cards if you're willing to pay for postage, um, or if you come by a, one of their booths at a show, you can just pick up the replacement card. For our game, because I don't think we're going to, as two players, there's no way we're going to get through this whole deck, um, I'm just going to put the card at the bottom of the deck, and we don't have to worry about it. But that deck is just going to go someplace nearby, you're going to need it pretty infrequently. Um, then you're going to find the cards that have the fans. The majority of the deck should have the fans, but different section of the fan in the upper right is going to be filled in. So there will be one stack of cards with a little tiny fan, little tiny fan, that has no sections of the fan filled up. You're going to randomize these and you're going to seed the board. So you're going to take one and put it face up in each of the big card squares. Okay. And then the first player is going to get the four cards that have the little fans with the one section, the first section filled in. That'll be the first player's hand. And then the second player's hand will be the fan that has two of the fan sections and and so on and so forth. So if you're if we were playing with John, if John had made it, he would be getting the hand of cards, the four cards that have three of the hand sections filled in, and so on. There is another deck of cards that has the weird shadowy silhouette in uh, landscape mode. This is for solo play. Mm. So if you're not playing solo, you can just ignore that entirely. Um, but that deck can go back in the box um, because. If you're not playing with more people, you don't need their hands. You can put all the hands that you're not playing with away. You forgot to hit your tiles face up. Oh. Well, yeah, you have to explore them. No, you have to flip them face up. Mmm. This hot cocoa is the best. Okay. I was very happy with my hot cocoa, thank you. Cool. So, now... A little bit more setup, and then we're ready to roll. So each player should have one of their cubes that's actually a rectangle. You're going to take your rectangle and you're going to put it on your player board on the spot that's meant exactly for it. Amazing. Then you're going to take, you should actually have 
Um, 14 cubes? Yes. So you're going to have 14 cubes. You actually only need 12. So the other two are kind of spares. You can put those someplace. Put them back in the box. Put them back in the bag. Um, if you could put them in my player bag, that'd be great. Then there's a little wooden flower meeple. That's your scorekeeper. You're going to put that on the zero spot. Um, then you have a little person. That is your representative that is going to the Forbidden City. You're going to put them on one of the squares at the base of the palace, the Forbidden City Gates. Then you have a dude on a horse! Dude on a horse! Uh, dude on a horse is just going to hang out somewhere up here. Not actually on a tile just yet. Dude on a horse doesn't actually get on the road until you actually take that action. Then you have um, an egg. <laughs> it's meant to be a mask, but mm. it looks like an egg. Um, that's going to go on the entry track, and this is really important. The order in which you put them on the entry track is significant, and so let me just look it up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so the starting player is going to put theirs on the bottom, and then you go clockwise, so Steve will be on top. Yep, there you go. Um, the, for the points, it doesn't matter who's on top or on bottom. But this track, it is always extremely important who is on top and who is on bottom. Coolies. All right. So then you're going to take your 12 cubes that you still have out. You're going to put them someplace nearby, far enough away that you won't accidentally pull a Steve and use them during the game, but close enough mm. that you can reach them when you're supposed to. So we're just going to put Steve's a little further away, and you all can watch and pay attention and make sure he doesn't use them when he's not supposed to. Um, but we're going to take six of those, and we're going to put them on our board where there's a little picture of a cube. And now we're ready to start teaching. Woohoo! Just going to drink some more hot cocoa. And check in the chats. Hey, Yoda. Hey, chats. Thank you for helping us hit our goal. Um... Oh. So pretty. So delicious, this hot cocoa. Can we screw your board up a little? Mm -hmm. Alright. This cocoa is so good. I'm addicted. Oh! Another thing that each player has is three boats. And there's sails in the player colors. Just put those someplace nearby. You got your stiff. All right. What um, what day of the year is the best day to take one of our boats up the river? Sail day. Close. Mm. Black Friday. I don't get it. Because it's when everything's on sale. Oh, goodness. All right. Whoever is first player needs to roll the three dice and then put them at the top. Um... It's important to differentiate between a six and a nine, because those are both possibilities. All right, cool. So. What's your horse doing up here? Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. So, let's start teaching. So, in Hugong, um, we are each representatives of a family in um, uh, China. And we are, I was trying to remember the dynasty, and I can't remember the dynasty. It's like 14th century. And we are trying to win favor with the new emperor. Oh, the it's 1570. The Longqing emperor of the Ming dynasty. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's, is that 16th century? No, that's 14th century. Huh. But no, 1570. It's 14th century. It's 15th century. It's 15th century. I don't understand how centuries work. Fair. That would be the 15th century. I don't know. Anyway. But 1900 was the 20th century. No, we're in the 20th century now. No, we're in the 21st century. Oh, we are in the 21st century. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you had it right. This is going great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are. We each represent heads of family in the 14th century uh, Ming dynasty, and we're trying to gain favor with the emperor. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to use our status and influence, 
around the kingdom to do various things to benefit us. So we're going to help construct the Great Wall of China. We're going to do some spying and intriguing. We're going to have some decrees um, made that like affect the area of whatever we live in. Um, we're going to we're going to do some trading uh, and some harbor stuff. And we're going to have some we're going to have uh, some people go out and travel the road and speak well of us and gain favor um, for us. So the thing is, here's the here's the thing. Traditionally, this was done via what we might call bribery. So uh, in the so in the Ming Dynasty, one of the emperors was very well known for just like it was very corrupt and very bribable. And so the uh, Long King Emperor put an end to bribery and was like, if you if you bribe somebody or or if you're an official and you get caught bribing, you're dead. Like we will, you it's treason and you're you'll be executed. And so what they started doing, and it's a new tradition, is they started bringing gifts. And so it's not bribery if. I just, you know, happen to bring you a nice gift and you give me a nice gift back. It's not bribery. No, it's an exchange. We're just exchanging it's like gifts. like a white elephant party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a real thing in history. Um, And so basically, like, we'd be like, oh, no, it's not a big deal. This is just, you know, like, a, this is just a family knickknack we've had around. Don't worry about it. It's like a priceless heirloom something, right? And then, you know, you would give that to an official and then the official would be like, Oh, thank you. This is really ni- this is a very nice fan that I've treasured since I got it yesterday at the dollar store, right? Um, so that's kind of how things would happen. So in this game, we're doing that. So the cards represent the gifts that we are giving, and the cards on the tableau or on the board represent the gifts that we're getting back from the officials that run that station. So in order for us to do things in this game, we need to give a better gift than we are getting back from them. However, we can do some things so that if we do give a gift of equal or lesser value, um, we can spend extra servants or spend an extra card to get to still be able to do the stuff. So maybe the official isn't super happy about it, but like we'll still be able to, to get away with it. And so... The different areas of the board all act differently, but the flow is exactly the same. When you play a card to an area, if you play a card that is a higher value than the card already there, you may activate the action on the card, you may activate the action on the board location you've gone to, or you may do both as long as you activate the card action first, okay? Um, In addition, you gain the card that is already at the table that you place. You always will gain the card. So for example, I could place this two here and I would gain this seven. Any cards I gain go to my discard. But because I played a two instead of a seven, I wouldn't get to activate this unless I also discarded one of my servants, or sorry, discarded two of my servants back to the general supply, which is this, or instead of doing that, I could discard an additional card from my hand face down to my discard to be able to now use this ability and this um, action space as if I had given a better valued gift. Okay, so that's how the cards work. All of the spots function the same way in that regard. Um, If you're not giving a strictly greater than card than you give, you have to either discard two servants from your personal area or discard an additional card. Okay, so on your turn, Ooh. you must... Sorry. Contain it, boy. Mm-hmm. On your turn, you must place a card. So you must play a card. Um, and if you have any cards in your hand, you must play cards. So you're always forced to play until you have no more cards, and that'll be the end of a round. We're going to play four rounds. Each round is made up of a morning phase where we will get more servants... We will um, exchange first player tokens if it needs to happen. We'll roll those dice, which I'll talk about later. Uh, and then we'll get any morning benefits. 
Then we'll take our actions, which is we'll play cards until we have no more cards to play. And then we'll have a night phase. And in the night phase, we'll score points for destiny and a couple other stuff. So let's talk about the actions, because it's the meat of this game. First step, really simple. Oh yeah, this is really important. The person who wins this game is the person who has the most points, right? They have the most influence over the area. However, that's entirely worthless if you don't reach the top of the Forbidden City stairs. Yep. So if you don't complete this middle section of the board, doesn't matter how many points you have, you lose instantly at the end of the game. So let's talk about all the actions on the board. Um, now that you have that in your head. First action, up here, this one. This is go traveling. So when you go traveling, you play a card, right? I'll play a card that's higher. So boom, I take that card, put it face down. Now, for the very first time you travel, you can put your horse anywhere and you gain the token at the location that you travel to, okay? Um, so I could be like, oh sweet, I'm gonna go here, okay? So then I get this and I gain whatever the token tells me to gain. And then I put the token here, face down. Whenever you see an icon that is the cube with a white printed number, that means you're gaining that number of cubes from your general supply to your personal supply. So in this situation, I would gain one um, assistant, right? And then I put the token face down there. However, let's say instead of doing that, let's say I want to move a little bit more, I could instead of just doing what I was, the base action, I could spend two cubes from my personal supply back to the general supply, and then I could move my horse dude twice. So for the first turn of the game, I could put him down, and then I could move him again. So I would get both of these, which is pretty good. I would get a cube back, and then this one, it's kind of a weird one, um, it's the little mask symbol. This means that I get to move up on this track once, okay? And that's the thing with these travel tokens is a lot of them will let you do things in other parts of the board. So for example, there's a travel token here that lets you advance your um, official up the forbidden track. So that's nice, that's good. Um, let me reset what I've done. Then there's another, there's a couple cards that will let you just get points straight up. Um, whenever you see the red flower background, that means you gain those points immediately. Um, whenever you see a purple background flower thingy with spikes, that means that you gain those points again and again. You gonna fall asleep? Nope. He's not bored. He's just bored. Uh, so, um... Those travel tokens will more just hit on when we're playing the game and we run into them. So that's the travel board. It's really straightforward. Um, if you are moving around the board and there's a spot that doesn't have a token on it, you just skip over it. It doesn't count as one of your movements. Same goes if somebody is at a location. So if Steve was standing on a location, I would skip over him. Um, I don't count that as my movement. So in that way, you can get really far and you can turn and backtrack and it doesn't really matter. So you can go kind of crazy as you travel around the travel board to get those tokens. When you gain those tokens, you have slots up here, you have max six slots. At any time on your turn, you can discard those tokens for benefits. So you can discard two tokens to get another servant from your general supply to your personal supply, or you can discard four to get two points, or you could discard six to get a jade, okay? Next up, Great Wall of China. So this one's really easy. Let's say I went instead to the Great Wall of China, okay? It's helpful that I have a nine card. I can go anywhere. Um, so the Great Wall of China, when you go here, the free action is you can put one of your servants from your personal support, your personal pool onto this um, track, which represents building a section of the Great Wall. There's little numbers up at the top. So in a one or two player game, when four cubes or more are in this um, section, that means that section of the Great Wall is done. In a three player game, you need four. So there's that. Um, once a section has been filled, let's steal some cubes from Sleepy Steve over there. Um, once a section has been completed, so we have four cubes, so we're done here, we immediately figure out who built the most. So in this situation, I built the most. So, um, cause I have three and Steve has one. 
So I would gain three points, and I get to put my um, ambassador or my official one step higher up the track. In addition, um, everyone who helped build the wall at all this section gets to, if they would like, spend intrigue points to gain benefits. So the intrigue track is really just the tiebreaker. It's the tiebreaker for the whole game. So whoever is the highest on the intrigue track is going to win any tie for any reason in the entire game, including the end game. If you are um, stacked one on top of each other, the person on top wins the tie. The only other reason that you have the intrigue track is when a section of the Great Wall is completed, whoever participated in it. Honey, if you're going to fall asleep on camera... <laughs> Do you want to look at your phone? No, no, no. I, I'm fine. Um, Are you sick? No, I wasn't feeling super hot earlier. So. You're kind of warm. Yeah. Do you want to take a temperature? You're also wearing two hoodies. Yeah. I want to point that out. Oh, it's also really cold. Are you still really cold? Better. Let's do it. No, we're playing a game. Let's play people. Okay. I'm still teaching. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're just falling asleep on camera, and so it looks really bad. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay um, attention. You don't have to pay attention. I just don't want you sick and passing out on camera. <laughs> We work hard here. <laughs> um, Steve battled the cold in the cold one, you know, yeah. basically. Um, okay, so the only other reason you have the intrigue track is um, when you complete a section of the Great Wall, you can spend some of your intrigue uh, position to gain benefits. So you can spend one intrigue point to uh, get a cube back. You can spend three intrigue points to get two cubes back. You can spend five intrigue points to change one of those dice up there, which will come in handy at the end of the uh, round. Or you could spend seven intrigue points to get a jade. So that is the intrigue track and this. Um, the Great Wall also has a secondary thingy where if you want to add more than one cube, you can discard one personal servant to put two cubes onto the Great Wall instead of just one. So kind of every location, actually every location, with the exception of that one, has a thing where you can do it for free or you can discard servants to do it more. Um, right. I was going to example more. So when the Great Wall was finished, whoever built the most on the Great Wall, all of their cubes go back to the general supply. And whoever did not build the most, uh, their cubes stay. So that's important, because you can just have a cube hanging out there, and as long as you never have the most, like, you'll always have helped the Great Wall. How awesome. Okay, so that's the Great Wall. Every location has a symbol that matches it, and that's important because the cards, when you play a card to a location, um, you can activate that card as well, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, this location, really straightforward, it's the Jade House. When you go to the Jade House, you spend the number of cubes depicted on the house that you want Jade from. The Jade is all the same, it's just that this one's cheaper. Once this is gone, it gets more expensive, and then more expensive, and then more expensive. The reason you want Jade is at the end of the game, it's a set collection bonus, so it's an escalating scale. If you have one Jade, it's one point, two Jade is three points, three Jade is six, four is ten, five is fifteen, so on and so forth. Um, so that's Jade. It's like the entire purpose for Jade. Next section, Intrude Track. Already talked about it. But if you go here, so if I specifically took this card to activate this location, you get to go up the Intrude Track. And if no one has taken the I go, ne I go First Next Round token, you gain the I Go First Next Round token. Also, alternatively, you can spend one personal cube um, to advance on this track three times. But if you do that, you do not gain the I go first next round bonus. So that is the intrigue track. All right, I'm going to skip this one. Ah, no, I won't. This is easy. So this is the Forbidden City. Hey, it's the perfect time to show this one. So I could do this anywhere, but the nine doesn't have any bonus action. So if I took this two and put this two here, it's higher than the one. So. I can use the action on the card, because I finally have played a card that has an action on it. 
The action on this card is a great wall action. So I can take the great wall action as if I had gone there, meaning that I could just put one cube down for free or discard a cube to put two cubes down. Sweet. If that triggers a completion of the great wall, we resolve it like normal. Then I would go ahead and do whatever the action space is for where I went, which in this case is the Forbidden City. So um, in this one, for free, I can just advance one step for free. Alternatively, I can discard two personal cubes to advance two steps, plus advance my intrigue track once. If you reach the top of the steps, you put your person um, in the highest point valued area, and then from then on for the rest of the game, if you ever needed to advance on this track, you just gain a point instead. So there is that. Next section, that one. So this is the decree section. This is modifiers for the game, for the whole game, and there's more than you need when you play. So for example, these two, which are a little easier to get, they're a little cheaper. When you go to this location, you pay the number of cubes depicted on the decree you want, plus one cube for every player who already has a decree marker there. So let's say that I want this one, which says every morning during the morning phase, I get to advance once on the Forbidden City track. So if I want to do that one, I have to pay one cube because that's how much it costs for the tile and then zero additional cubes because no one else is here. So I would pay those, so I'd pay two, discarding them, and then I take a third cube and put it there to mark that I've done it. On a future turn, if Steve wanted to go there, he would have to pay the one cube for the cost of the decree, then he'd have to pay one cube because I have one cube there, and then, oh wait, I did my cost too much. I actually only have to pay one cube, not two. Steve would have to pay two cubes because it's the cost of the token, plus I have one there. So he would actually have to discard two cubes, and then his third one would go there. Sorry, so the first person that goes to these actually only has to pay one. I've done everything wrong! Um, so there's that. I want to make sure I get everything back. Um, this decree, these two decrees are cost two each, and these two cost three each. Um, so these two decrees basically let you do stuff in the morning phase. These two decrees um, modify like when you go to one of the locations on the board. So for example, this one is when you go to get decrees, they're cheaper. Uh, and this is when you go to the Great Wall, you can put a cube from your general supply free to the Great Wall, which is pretty sweet. These ones, these um, level three decrees, these are in-game points. So this one says that at the end of the game, I'll get two points for every jade that I have, max 10 points. That's pretty sweet considering the jade set collection. And then this one says um, at the end of the game, for every cube I have, I think, hanging out at Harbors, I get two points. I'm going to double check that. All of the decrees have a little FAQ in the rule book. Yep. So every harbor, every cube you have next to a harbor reward gives you two points for that one. No max. So that's pretty sweet. So that's that area. Um, next, harbor rewards. So this section involves those little boats. So the harbor, if you're playing on the four and five player side, there's actually two harbor paths. If you're playing on the one to three player side of the board, there's only one harbor path. So on this one, when you play a card here, so let's say I did that, right? I get that. Um, because it was a higher value card, I can do this action, which is I would go up the steps. And then I can do the board action, which is I get to place a cube on a boat and then move a boat. Um, if I don't have a cube already on the harbor, I can place one onto a boat that I already have. And then any boat, when I put a cube on it, if it's not in the harbor, I have to put it at the starting spot of the harbor. If the, start, if the starting spot of the harbor is occupied, I go to the next spot, so on and so forth. Then I can move my boat one space, um, and it's just like the travel thing. If anybody's boat is in the way, you skip it. So I would go here. Um, alternatively, I could discard one cube to place two cubes on a boat. Um, but if I did that at this location, I wouldn't get to move the boat. <laughs> the goal of this section is you want to get three cubes on a boat, so you want to fill a boat up, and when you have a full boat, when it is in a harbor, you may say, oh, I want that harbor reward, and so you would take one of your cubes, 
you would leave it at the harbor, um, and there's a little spot on your board that matches the type of harbor. So this is the gain an extra card harbor. And then the other cubes that you have would go back to your supply, and the, the boat would go back to you as well, so you have no more boats on the board. The different harbor rewards are you can gain four points, and you can do that three times. This one is you increase your hand size and draw a new card. When you do that, you draw a top card from the Ying Yang deck, and that is now in your hand. Um, so you can even use it that round. Uh, but from that point on, you're going to have one extra action than your opponents, which is pretty sweet. That's how you increase your hand limit and do more stuff. And you can do that maximum twice. There's two little spots on your board for cubes. The final one that you can do is you can get your, uh, what do they call them? Double servant, I think is what they call them. It's a very boring name. You can get your double servant, which is your big boy, your rectangle. You can only do that once uh, a game, but there's two spots where you can do that. And when you gain him, he goes to your personal supply. And whenever it says place a servant, you can place him. But he counts as two servants for the Great Wall or the Harbor, which is pretty sweet. Um... So when you would ever gain a single servant, you can always gain him because he counts as a single servant. He just does the work of two servants on locations like the Great Wall and um, the Harbor. So there you go. <sighs> There's like so many areas and it's so pretty. It's really straightforward. Um, and it goes really fast because if you play your cards right, you're basically taking two actions a turn. Um, but there's an interesting economy in the cards and your servants. You're always having to pay attention to your servants. Um, there we go. All right. I wanted to double check that when you gain... Yep. We're ready, Steve. How you doing? I'm doing. I walked around a bunch. I'm wondering if you should take your one of your hoodies off. Mm, no, I'm still cold. It's not okay. Mm. All right. Are you ready? Did I reset the board correctly? Okay. I was long, Teach. Good job, Teach. I always worry. It's like faster if you're playing in person to teach, but yeah. All right. Here we go. Teach you want somewhere. I know, they both do. Uh... Thank you for teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go here. So I'm going to put the card that I gained based down on my discard. Um, oh, right. I didn't teach the end phase. Ah. So after every player has run out of cards, you're going to have a whole bunch of cards over here in your discard that you gained throughout the game. I'm just going to, for purposes, say that's that. Um, every player is going to look at that hand of cards that is their discard. And for every card that matches one of the dice that we rolled at the beginning of the round, you gain a person back from your general supply. I actually don't have any people that match, which is a shame. Um, so yeah, there's that. Whoever matches the most um, cards to dice will gain three points and get to move their, ser their um, official up the forbidden steps. So that's pretty nice. In addition, the dice stack. So for example, if I did have two ones and there's a one die, I would actually gain two servants, one for each die and one for each card. So if I had two ones and there were two dies, or two dice that were ones, I would gain four servants. So I, for every die, I would gain one servant for each card, and then each card would give me a servant for each die. And then whoever wins the mo gets the most servants is who wins? No, it's whoever matched the most dice. Mm. So it's not who got the most servants, who it's who matched the most dice to numbers, um, gets the three points and an advancement up. And again, all ties are broken by the intrigue track, even that one. Then 
At the end of the night phase, every boat in the harbor will sail one space to the left, starting with any boats at the end. If your boat mm -hmm. sails off the world, it's just you gain... The people go back to the general supplies and the boat goes back and you don't get anything. During the night phase, sailing, if you have a boat come into harbor, it's your boat and it has three servants on it, you can decide to gain that harbor reward right then and there, which is pretty sweet. Um, then that's the round. We'll do the morning phase, which is if we need to swap first player, we'll do that. Um, we'll refill the travel tokens, so we don't do that until the morning phase. And then we'll re-roll the dice, so we'll have new dice. Um, anybody that has morning phase activation decrees, those activate. And then we'll gain a number of servants that is depicted on the board. So in rounds two and three and four, we'll gain four servants during the morning phase, in addition to any that we've already gotten because of other things. Um, so yeah, you're limited to 12 servants, period, in the game. So if you start putting them on like harbor spots or decrees, they're going to be out of the game and you won't be able to use them to pay for stuff. So, okay. Yeah, I think I'm still missing a servant. <sighs> did you drop one? I don't see it on the board. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll get one of these players. <laughs> That's why we have them. Wait, is this it? Is this it? <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> you found it. It's you got a blue it. collar. I don't see it. All right. <sighs> Sorry, baby. That'll show up. Let me put the game away. Okay. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to do what I was planning to do. Uh, so I'm going to play that there. So I get that. Um, I get to do a Forbidden City thingy, so I'm just gonna get one step for free. Sweet. And then I will do, um, which decree do I want? Don't know, no. So, immediately, ooh, okay. Oh, that is amazing. Okay. Night, Amy. Thanks for trying. Um, I'm going to do this decree. So this decree, so I have to pay, I discard one for the cost of the decree. No way out there, so I don't have to do that. And then I spend one there, which is um, every morning you may exchange one card from your hand slash discard uh, with one card on the board oh. before we actually start taking actions. Oh. But after the dice are rolled. That's important. Um, so that was my turn, yo. What did you say? It is no. On my turn. It is on your turn. I'm gonna go to Palace Town. It's a real place. And I do the action on the card first, yes? Yes. Which is gonna be intrigue, so I'm gonna discard one servant to go three spaces. Mm -hmm. And then I will do the action here, and then I'm gonna discard two servants to go one, two spaces. And, a, and then one intrigue space. Wow. Okay then. Just get rid of all your servants, why don't you? Mm. Um I'm going to go to Travel Town. So the card doesn't have any bonus action, but I will spend. Hmm. 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 Uh, wow. Excuse me. Excuse you. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, I'm gonna s discard two tokens. 
Then I'm going to do... I'm going to do this token and this token. So, um, this one lets me take a card from my discard and put it in my hand. So, I'm going to take this card and put it in my hand. And then this token lets me take a card from my hand or my discard and swap it with something on the board. So, I'm going to swap... The AP is already set in. Oh my goodness. Uh, hey, Vinyl Rabbit. I'm gonna swap oh. that to get my nine back. Kabuki didn't realize that was Scarface. I was going to say Repo Man, but I wasn't sure if it was Repo Man. Yeah. That would be cool. All right, that was my turn. Is it my turn? Yeah. It was a long, it was a long teach, but we survived. I'm going to tweet that we're playing now. Um, do you get the tile you start on and you get a movement? No. Or is the one movement the tile that you... The one movement on? is the tile that we start on. Uh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to get a tile from my supply. Onto the grave. Your turn. This tweet now we're playing. Um. Come hang! Oh. Oh, well, Jaime reviewed the tape, and I always had 11 servants, so it didn't get dropped during the teach. Okay. Oh, uh, then it, have you checked your pockets? No. Then, okay, then it's possible it got lost during cleanup, because they definitely had... So that's the real reason oh. we stream all these games. It was in the box. Thank you, Jaime. Don't put it back in the box. Oh, you did. Yeah. Um, it's the real reason we stream live, so people rewatch hard tapes to see our mistakes for us. No accountability, these kids. Also, apparently there's two Tiny Nemo's War expansions on Kickstarter, so I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna go look for things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that seems really good, but I don't have things for it, so... Made a horrible mistake. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do that one to do a harbor action, and I'll do the free one. So I put a dude on the boat, and then the boat goes on the board. That was my turn. Super exciting. Wow. <clears throat> How much is it? I, I haven't gotten to the prices yet. I've just gotten to the wanting it part yet. Uh, my turn. What yep. did you do? Um, I went to the harbor place. Harbor place. Harbor Come place. to the harbor. Uh, I'm going to go to Decree Town. Um, so... So how does this work? I have to discard two cubes to put one down. Where? Yeah. Or if I want to do a level two. Yeah, you discard two cubes and then you put one down. Oop. Yep. Okay. Um, could you play the card that I know you have that I do want you, you to play? Do you know? I do know you have it, yes. Because you were the second player, which means you <gasps> have to have that card. <gasps> 
Um, I'm going to play that there. Um, so nice. I get to swap a card again. Oh. Um, so I don't think. Mm. Ooh, seventh continent. I've I'm almost swap played that a couple times. This two for the seven, so it's gonna go because I took the two from my discard. It's gonna go there, uh, and then I'm going to go up a step on the track. Very boring. Your turn, Kairaz. Is it my turn? It is. I think it might be my turn to go first. That's cool. It's fine. So you're going to go up one, mm -hmm. and then you're going to take the thing. Thank you for finally playing the eight! <laughs> um, thanks, Steve. Yeah, I had, um, I had very few options. There's, I'm going to discard my Pierce Snow Cube, so I can go up three, so three, um, because that makes sense for me. So I'm out of cards. Steve's out of cards. Um, and that's the round. Look how fast All that right. is. Uh, like and subscribe. Or hit the, hit the bell. Okay, so now we're in the night phase. So we're going to check our hands, our oh. discards, for what matches. I forgot to... You have a one, though. I have a one, but I forgot to look for matches. Is that why you wanted me to play the eight? Yes. Um. So I have an eight and a six. I so a I'm going to get two back. Steve will get one back. And then I have the most matches. So I'll go up on this Forbidden City, and I get three points. Boom. Babooshk. And then uh, my boat will advance in the harbor. Steve has no boat in the harbor, so it doesn't advance. Uh, and that was the night phase. And so now we're on to round two. Boop. Uh, or Steve is now the first player token. So hang on, you don't get those yet. Let's do this in order. So Steve is now the first player token. This goes back. Then we refill the travel board. So we don't put a travel token where there is a person. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing that happens. Then, the person who is first re-rolls the dice. Oh, I brought the small one out, didn't I? Oh. One, one, four. Oof. Okay, then. Um, and then anyone that has morning decrees gets to do the morning decree. So my morning decree says that I can swap one of the cards in my hand for something on the board already. So I think um. I'm gonna swap this two for this uh, four. Yes. Yes, I want to do that. Okay. Uh, then we gain the cubes denoted for this round, so we each gain four cubes to our personal supply. Boosh! And now we start playing cards in turn order, starting with Steve, because he's first. I forgot these need to be face down. This board is so huge! So it's, huge on bread art! It's, it's a big board. The like hardest part of streaming while painting minis is like I just want to be painting minis. Ah, yes! So I forgot to mention this in the teach, but the ones can take the nines. There's a little one greater than nine mm -hmm. on there. So it wraps. The idea being that sometimes you have incredibly rare fruit or whatever, and the rare fruit is awesome. Highly desired. This um, was originally a Forbidden City, yes. I will remove a cube, and then I will go one, two, three. Okay, well. You're really bumping up oh. our intrigue track. You also get to do a decree action, if you would like. 
Um, I will discard a cube. Yeah. Okay. Um, I... Uh, I'm going to take that one because it's worth points. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get to do a harbor action, which is sweet. Um, I'm actually going to discard a cube to put two cubes on the boat. Um, the boat doesn't move, though, which makes me sad. It's fine. I'll get over it. Uh, and I'll do the intrigue track once. Uh, no, I'm going to discard these two tokens, because you can do this any time. I'm going to turn them into a cube, so I get a cube back, and then I'll discard that cube, so that I get it to go three times. Up the track. Yes. Yep. Oh, hey, Seth! Seth Jaffe, uh, one of the er, head developer of Tasty Menstrual Games. About time somebody from Tasty Menstrual... Notices that I've been tagging y'all in these tweets. I've <laughs> been tagging you since Sunday or something. Um, All right. Guess what I'm doing. What you doing? Oh! And then one from my supply mm -hmm. because I have the decree. Yep. He has a decree that lets him put a thingy on the gray wall from his general supply. And then I'm going to go up one. So he's not cheating entirely. But he took the four. He took the four, my friends. <sighs> hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do this seven to here. So I'm going to <sighs> gonna put a cube on. Oh, first I do the intrigue. Sorry, I was taking the cube from the wrong place. Pulling a steep. So first I'm going to do the intrigue. So I'm going to discard... There's no reason. What is that? I mean, I think I know what you're going to do. But it's fine, because I can counteract it. Can you? I can. Can you, though? I can, yes. Um, I'm going to... Discard a cube to move three up. So one, two, three... And then I will um, put a single cube on the Great Wall, which finishes the Great Wall. So Steve has the most on the Great Wall, so he's going to gain three points. And then he also gets to go a step up. Then everyone who helped with the construction of the Great Wall gets to do Intrigue Track, um, starting with... Uh, you jumped up the Intrigue Track. I did but I want to undo what you do. Oh, Vince. Player who's mar you start with uh, the player whose marker is lowest. <laughs> but is that me? No. Yes, you are lowest on the entry track. Yep. It's good. It's good, Seth. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. I'm excited that you all are bringing it over. Are you going to spin them just for me to undo them? That's the idea. And the funny thing is, is I'll still be on top of you <laughs> if you do that. Oh. Is it worth it? Well, no, because otherwise you'll just change them to three ones. I mean, maybe. Maybe I have another plan. Maybe there's another card number that I can get a lot of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alright, he's doing it. Wait, was I on nine? You were on nine. So he's going to spend five entry points to flip the die to whatever he wants. So it was a one, and he's going to make it... Something. Oh, do these not, oh these don't have all the values. No, because they're D sixes, honey. They can't they can't have all the values. What? You're gonna have two fours? I'm two fours. You're going with two fours. Alright. 
Where's the Grand Prix? Great. So I have to spend five to undo what he did. Can you please change it back to, to a what? what? To, to a one. one. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Literally the word. Then Steve's tokens will go back to the general his general supply, and it bumps down. And that was that turn. And now it's Steve's turn. If I exchange a card for a card in my hand, do I have to do the location action, or can I just do the card? You can pass. You can stop. But I mean, like, I can exchange to get the card, even if I don't do the action. Yes, you can pass, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I'm gonna go here. So I get a five. Um, I get to do... I just get a cube back, which is very nice. And then I do the harbor action. I'm gonna put a cube on a boat because that boat's full. And then I move a boat, and I'm gonna move this boat. Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna do this harbor action. Whoops! So my hand size will now increase. So I take this cube and I put it here, and then I draw a card from here. Yay! And then these go back to there, and this goes back to there, and it's Steve's turn. Yeah, Tiffany did well jumping up the track. I thought I was safely far enough ahead that I could finish the Great Wall, but it was not. Yeah. Are you sure what's allowed? Undoing what he did? Yeah. Because you spent... But it's... I mean, he could have spent that intrigue to do something else. Yeah, it was just... And... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, it can happen that the same die gets turned by more than one player when the intrigue benefits are executed. They know what they're doing. <laughs> There's no AP in this game. Not at all. Not at all. Not, um, not even a little. Um, <sighs> move up twice. Oh, yeah, because you played an Emperor card on Emperor I played card. an Wait, Emperor. hang on. Was that four supposed to be in your hand? Because you did just pick it up. Oh, there's two like that. Ah. Are you out of cards? Yeah. Okay. Good to know. So I started. For reasons. So I have one cube left, which is not a lot. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna go here. Oh yeah. The order. The order for the undoing was uh. Two cubes. Whoever's lower on the intrigue track does the great wall action first, which is me. And then because she was higher, barely. No. She has to do the second. It was barely, but like it cost me a lot to oh, yeah. do that. I saw it coming, and so I spent a turn, and I spent two cubes, three cubes actually, to make that happen, so that I could undo what he did. So I was able to do it, but it was expensive for me. But yeah. I decided it was worth it. Um, I'm going here and I'm traveling. I'm going traveling, man! Um, and I'm going to go traveling to here to get this cube. cube. Gets me another cube back. Um, and then, uh, Steve's out of cards. I still have cards because I increased my hand limit. So I'm going to go here. So you voted? I voted. I voted. I voted. I ba ba voted. Um, I'm going to spend two cubes. Mm. To go up twice, and I get to go up once on the injury track. Um, and that's the round. So then we see the matches. So I have a one mm. and a four. So I'll get two cubes back. And then I have two fours. So he'll get two cubes as well. But I only match one die. Correct. And I want to just double check that. Yeah, um, that's worth checking. Which we checked last time, I just want to double check now. Hmm. 
It just says, uh, the player with the most matches. So you, we both matched the same amount, but I am higher on the intrigue track, uh, so I win the tie. So I gain three points, and I get to go a step up the track. Uh, then... You're always one boots. step ahead of me, Kyra. Boots, 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 boots. I love the boat track. Um, boots, 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 boots. And now we do the morning phase. So Steve is still the first player. I'm, so I'm mourning my last turn, I'll tell you that. Um, so we're in round three. We're over halfway, folks. Um, then we refill the travel board, which only I did anything. Start of your life. Then, Steve, you're going to re-roll the dice. One, three, five. Okay. Uh, and then, any morning decrees. So, Steve goes up one. Um, I have a morning decree where I get to get a card that's on... Board and uh, do I want any of these cards? I think I want to swap this five for this seven. Yeah, that that swap is pretty great to get in the morning. Yep. Um, and then we get our cubes, so we each get four servants back, which is all the servants I should would get we, back. Would we do those in intrigue order also? I guess none of them are the same power. But... Do, do what? Uh, do morning, morning decrees, if it mattered. Um, I think you do them in turn order. Hmm. With tiebreakers. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. uh, oh. In player order. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, your turn. Uh, that dice tray is from Jason Dinger. He made that for us. Which is very nice. We use it uh, in dice heavy games. I'm afraid I need to do this. Discard two servants, which is pretty heavy, to get boop boop. And a movement on the entry track. So I am now ahead on the entry track because I'm on top, and I reached the final spot in the palace. Yep. So he got seven points from that. I don't know so, if it was worth burning two. I mean, using two servants. Just burning them. All um, right. See you, Nierfenstein. Thanks Enjoy for heading out. Thing. Or hanging out, not heading out. Thanks for hanging out. Wow. <laughs> Oof. Thanks for heading out. That's that's brutal. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna go to the Great Wall. So I'm gonna put a cube down for. Mm, I'll discard a cube to put two cubes down. And then I also get to do an intrigue, which I should have done first. So I'll do the single intrigue to gain this. I get to go first in the last round. I almost used a cuss word. Alright, that's my turn. <laughs> Steve's turn! Uh, who breaks ties on the Great Wall? Is it whoever's there earliest? It's intrigue track. Literally really? everything in this game, the tie is the intrigue rack, track. Like literally everything. At the there, my favorite part of this entire rule book, favorite part of any rule book of all of Essen, is the very last, like three words, in the end game summary. It's in case of a tie, the order of the intrigue markers is decisive. Parentheses. We are consistent. In parentheses. It's everywhere in this book. Every tie is broken by this track, and I love that. Mm. We're on the second to last round, John. We're on the penultimate round. This is going quickly. All right, I'm not doing the card action. You get a point. You should just do it. Huh? You literally get a point. No, I played a lower card. I oh, oh. Because I took, I took a five with a four, so I then can't you, do the card action. You can't do either action, honey. You need to discard two servants oh. or discard an additional card. You can swap the cards, but if you want to take any of the actions, you have to do the thing. So let's undo you doing that. <laughs> Jeez. 
two servants, huh? Mm-hmm. Or just card a card. But I discard the card in my area, right? So I get yes. it back. Yes. Yeah, you'll get it for next round. Yeah, I'll do that. It's not insanely heavy, um, but there's a lot to pay attention to. It's like medium heavy. Okay, so you did discard. Okay, so you would still, you want to do the point because there's no reason not to. Yeah. He can't move up further, so he'll just get a point instead. Okay. And then, okay. There you go. Oh. I took it. You took it. I made a whole thing about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, your turn. I made a whole thing. Um, I was very proud. I was like, I'm going to do this thing. It's going to be great. I'm going to do stuff. Um, I have placed myself into a corner. But it's fine. I'm going to play this four here. So I get to do an emperor action, and then I get to move my dude. Mm. Um, I'm going to move my dude. I'm going to discard two cubes to move him twice. So I'm going to go here once, which lets me put a cube from my supply into the great wall. Oh. Uh, and then I'm going to turn him around, and he's going to gallop across the land to there and take that one. Um, so I now am also up here, so I don't have to pay attention to it anymore. And because I finished the Great Wall, um, I get three points. One, two, three. Um, and I get to go up again. Oh, so there's no reason for me to gallop there. I'll gallop here and get that instead. Doi. Doi, doi, doi. Um, so I get two points, and then I'm there. Um, then all the players that are here get to do entry things. Which is just me. Just me. Um, so... I... Uh, I did not see that travel token coming. Um, I will just... I'll spend a single entry to get a cube. Yeah. And then... Steve a turn. This is playing very differently than our last game. Yeah, it really is. Discard two servants. I want me to put one servant down. Which lets me do one from this supply. Okay. Uh, okay, I want to put so I'm paying one to put down two to. Okay. And um, then the one from my supply is nice. Whoopee. I am going to... Yeah, the extra hand size is a real help. Oh, and I get to do the boat action. You know, we both messed up. When we did these decrees, you're supposed to get points immediately. So I'm supposed to be three points higher, and Steve is supposed to be six points higher. I was like, why is this such a low uh, scoring game? That's why. I can't I can't put a boat down if I don't have cubes, right? Correct. Do you mind if I retcon slightly? Sure. Get a cube back to get this back. And then I will put a boat down. Let's see what cube. 
All the singing cubes. All the singing cubes. Put your hands up. Put the cubes up. Um, I am going to play. Don't want to do this, but I need this card. Yep. So I'll play a one here. Um, I'll just get a point because I can't go any higher. And then I get to do a decree. Um. Oh, uh, you should do the one that lets you gives you two points every cube on a boat. Boat, 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 boat. I call that one. Do credence play water or what revival? It's it's one point for every uh harbor thingy oh, okay. you've done. Do, um do credence play water. Um I think I'm instead going to pay the thing that makes decrees cheaper. So I'm gonna pay two cubes and then put one there and then I get four points. Ooh. And now decrees are cheaper. Yeah, I'm post. Uh your turn. Oh, card uh, I dumped a card early, so. Oh, you did. I have two cards. I have two cards. Left. Oh, John Ivers, is this by the designer of Hansa Teutonica? Or is it something else? I believe this one is, yes. That makes sense. Um, yes, it's one of the reasons I was looking into this game. And then I read the rules, and I was like, ooh, aha, yee. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm going to play this two mm -hmm. here to gain the one, yep. and then it's an intrigue, so I get that yep. back on top. Um, and then I get a point. Uh, here I think, right? Yeah. Either ten or eleven. Um. And I, think I got I got points once for the Great Wall, right? Yes. No. Yes. You did one Great Wall once. And then I got six points from this. And, and you got then one I got one point step. from oh. yeah. Um so I have one card left. Don't neglect your boats, folks. Don't neglect your boats. Boot, boot, boot. One card left. And I have to play it. But I can't actually beat anything with it, which sucks. I don't have enough cubes to do things, which sucks. So I can either play it. I can't I can't do anything. But I can get a higher valued card for next round. So I'm gonna play it over the six to get the six. And I don't get to do the action because I don't have a card to discard, nor do I have two cubes to discard so that I could do this. Which makes me sad. Um so that's the round. So then we see how many we match. Um I have a one, three, and five. I only have the five and the three. So I match three. I match two. Um, just in case I was winning ties, woohoo! Oh. So I get three points, um, and I get a step up, which means I get a point, and then put, 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 put. And then I get two cubes. Put, 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 put. Um, so that is the night phase. Now it's the morning phase. I am now once again start player. We refill the travel track. So. that out. I will re-roll the dice. Oh, no. Travel token exchanging is definitely a thing. Yes. I could have exchanged to get another cube so that I could have done the action, but the only action I really wanted to do would be to put a cube on a boat, which I couldn't do because I wouldn't have any cubes because I would have had to discard them to do this stuff. So I decided I wanted to six more. Um, okay. Then we do the morning decrees. So I get to swap a card on the board with one in my hand. Um, I think I'm okay. Mm. 
Mm. I'm slow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Steve gets a point because he would go up the track, but he's already at the top of the track. And then we get we each get four cubes. Um, because we are on the fourth and final day, which is the last round. Did you get your four cubes? Yeah, no, we didn't. And um, then we go. What action was that? Uh, you can take a card from your discard or your hand and swap it with one on the board. And I start. So I'm going to do a boat action. So um, I'm going to place a cube here, and then I'm going to move the boat for free. Boat, 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 boat. Uh, and then that's the card, and then for the actual location, I'm going to place a cube, and I will move the boat free. Boop, 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 boop. And so now I can do this boat action. Um, so I can either get four points, another card, or I can get my double worker. I think I'm going to get the other card, because it's an extra action. So these will go here, and this will go there. So I can no longer get any extra cards. I'm at max hand limit for the game, but there we go. John Edwards ordered a Thurgy shirt when he saw my Thurgy shirt today. <laughs> That's a good shirt. Yeah, I wear that shirt a lot. That's why you have two of them. Yep. Um, we were going to retire the second, but... I'm wearing it today. No. Alright, it's your turn. What is it? If my wardrobe... I have a shelf, so we have like a... I have one of those like closet hanger clothes organizers. And I roll my t-shirts, and I have one of those, one one of the cubbies on that organizer is just corgi shirts. I have five of them. Okay. Sorry, the, the action I showed you, the exchange, I can exchange. What goes to where? There's, there's many You either places. take a card from your hand, or you take a card from your discard, and you swap it with a card on the board. Got it. So if you're taking something from your discard, when you get the new card, it's going to your discard. If you take something from your hand, the new card would go to your hand. Hey, mediocre gamer! Okay. Oh. What? I don't have any cubes in my supply. You don't? No. You'd have to spend a cube. But if you spent a cube to put cubes down, you would have one in your simple hand. Oh, but you're double Great Walling. So just do the one free twice. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll just do that. Okay. So Steve builds a section of the Great Wall. You're so great. I am great. So he gets four points. One, two, three. Because he would get three for the thingy and then one for going up stuff, which he can't do anymore. And then he gets to do an intrigue action. Uh, I would like cubes. I can't get cubes. Uh oh. Yeah. You can't do No, you can't. I've been linking people. I'm actually not gonna do an intrigue action. Probably should have, but. Should have, could have, would have. Okay, your turn. My turn. My turn. I don't know. Um. I'm going to do a boat action. Okay. So. Uh, I'm gonna get. Two cubes back, that's all the cubes I had. I'm gonna spin a cube to put two cubes on a boat. Boat, 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 go into the boat. Um, but I don't get to move the boat, so there's that. So now it's still straight. I'm gonna get some jade. You're jaded. I am jaded. I'm gonna you do the yeah, first card action. Swap a card on the board with one in my hand. Or and discard. So this is gonna go to the next. You put it in your discard. And now you can spend cubes to get jade. I'm gonna spend two to get one jade. Very nice. I'm gonna spend this nine here to do a decree action. Uh, I'm going to. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, that would go up there. Um, I'm gonna spend three cubes, plus put one there. 
to get that. There's only six points at the end of the game. Is it worth it? Ah, okay. Oh well, the stone is done. Tiva turn. Hanging out being annoying. <laughs> what, what, what is it doing? What? No, nothing. Nothing. You just, you just, you know, don't forget what's, your what's boat. Doing? It's important to do things with the boats. Oh, uh, the end of the day movement isn't going to matter, right? If your boat is full of people, it will matter. If you have three, you can. But the second it gets three, it no. clears off. No, it doesn't. You can, they can have three for however long until you're wanting to spend it. Oh. They can just chill on the boat. Bumping around, town to town. Can they? Mm-hmm. Can they? Hmm. Ooh. It's the same new artist as Fearns. Yeah. Because the old Fearns was different art. Yeah. Is this the same designer as Fearns? Or how you say it? A P. We're talking about A P. If he makes you feel any better, I think I've like screwed myself. Yeah, I just I don't have a lot of game sense for my own. Well, the travel board is helpful for doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Um Travel board, every day, to travel board. It's a weird song. Gonna be honest with you. It's a weird song. We picked up Fearns because a lot of the reviews said that Fearns, uh, Fearns is really good two player. Um so they did the reprint and we went ahead and order it. I'm really excited to play it. Um Haunts of Tonica John has and we played it like twice and it's amazing. Uh but like it's so fast. Mm. Boots? Boots boots? Spend one to put two down, and then I'm just gonna get the four points. You're just gonna get the four points, so your boat's gonna go away. Because there's no reason that boat's down at the end. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh, and then also this card doesn't go to my hand. And did you want to go up on the entry track? Do you want to spend cubes to go further? Asking for a friend. Um, I'm out of cubes. Oh, so then the answer to that is. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a beautiful situation. Um, I'm going to take the 7 with the 5, mm -hmm. which means I have to discard this card. Uh, and then I get to put a cube on a boat. Cube on a boat! And the boat's going to sail here. And I'll do that. And there we go. And so I get 4 points as well. Thank you for getting out of that spot. Mm-hmm. It's your turn. Fearin... Fearinze. Fearinze Lovingze in Las Vegas. <laughs> doing it. He's doing it. Everything gets me a point, so... 
This way, I at least get an extra point. Okay, so you get a point for going up the step. Okay. Um. I don't know, I don't get an extra point. Is there any reason I would want to keep? Do I want that? I think I do. No. Like, I don't think. I don't think, uh, Steve's gonna tie me, but it's always a good idea to make sure you got the tiebreaker, just in case. Uh, like, what's in game points again? Uh, Great, oh, great Wall decrees. Emperor oh yeah, we do the Great Wall one more time. Decrees, the thingy, and then the jade. jade. Yeah, so he's going to get two more points from that, a point from that. Yeah, so I'm only getting three points. Potentially three more points from... Match, 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 match. match matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a find, catch me a catch. Yeah, we sing that a lot in this house now. <laughs> yeah. Sound um, of music just gets in your head. That was... If I get one more travel token, I can turn it in for two points, and sorry, I'm just like. Oh. So, oh, Jaime would have named a group of corgis a loaf. Uh, <laughs> That's a group of sleeping corgis. Oh, it's a it's a loaf. No. What do you know? What do you call a group of sleeping corgis? A bakery. Uh... Um, that song is from Filled on the Roof. I was being silly because it's the sound of the sound of the music of that musical gets stuck in my head. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm APing so hard. Well, it's just your last action of the last turn of the last game, which you're probably gonna win. But if you don't, it'll be really frustrating. It'll come down to the if we tie. It'll come down to this moment, this magic moment. But I'm only getting what? Maybe six points. Yeah, I'm getting maybe six points, which, and you can't lose points. Ah, uh, zero must sell. Yeah, zero is a pretty cool name. Um, there's some, there's some good zero must sell. If I get another travel token, I can get a point. Otherwise, I can spend my two travel tokens to get another cube to do something that would give me points because of a cube. And I think I can't do that. Ah! <sighs> the... Yeah, the producers is the best zero, I think, and like the remake was the remake was good, of course. The the Matthew Broderick, I forget the other guy one, but the original producers was so good. Oh All right, um, I'll go to the Great Wall, cause why not? So I gain a cube. Yeah, that gets you a lot of points. And then sure. I'll go oh, there. Yeah. Um. I guess clearing off the Great Wall right at the end of the game is dangerous because we do partial scoring. Yeah. Well, do I want to spend a travel token to get another token? And there's no reason to. So. I won't. Oh, you just don't do entry benefits for the Great Wall at the end of the game, right? Yeah, because it doesn't. You don't need to. But I would get four points for doing that. Whereas, yeah. The most points I could get otherwise was tying you, or I think I figured out I could get three points. So I get the most points that way. Okay, so end of day phase. Um, We check for matches. I have two sevens and a four. So I match oh, darn. three times. I have three fours. <gasps> but they, we just each... Oh, snap! No, because I only match two of the dice, right? I don't match the third die? No, you... So, no. So 
<sighs> okay, so I get three cubes because I have three cards that match. You get four no six you, cubes. You get six cubes. Because each of your, so these three match one dice, and then these three also match another dice. So Steve gets six cubes for that. But I don't know if that gives me the end game. Uh, no, you do. You would get it. It's a match. So every cube you get. Whoever gets the most oh, okay. cubes also gets three points. So you get four points. Three for the thing, and then one for being on top of the stuff. Sorry. <gasps> and then our boats Did would move. Did I get that extra one? Yes. Then our boats would move. We don't have any boats, so it doesn't matter. So then we do in-game scoring, because the game is over. The first thing we do is we resolve the Great Wall of China no. one more time. I have the most. We just say it's done. I have the most, so I get three points, plus I get to go yeah. up a step, but I'm done, so I get four points. So... Boom. Um, then we resolve. Vince double checked that. Yeah, I guess that's the yeah. question coming from you, Gigi. Um. So I think we said earlier in the stream that it wasn't the number of cubes. But no, so I did. Clarifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, and clear. then I yeah, recorrected. Yeah. Um. Then any decrees that give us final points. I'm the only one that has one. I get two points for every cube I did a harbor score on, so I get six points from that. So I'm over here on thirty-eight. Well, you went pretty far. Yep. Um, and then we gain points for where we are on this track. So Steve's going to get seven points. Um, so he's at 31. And I'll get five points, please. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Uh, and then Jade. I have no Jade. Steve has a single Jade. Mm -hmm. She just gets him a single point. point. Yep. And then that's it. Uh, if neither of us had gotten our envoy to the top, or if one of us had not gotten our envoy to the top, we would have been disqualified, but we both did it, and... We reached the Palace of Heavenly Purity. We did it, Nightwing. I mean, who, who doesn't want to reach the Palace of Heavenly Purity? That's what I'm saying. But I win points. I get points. Yeah, it's, uh, clear how many cubes you get. There's an example in the rule book, which is why I'm like, why, why would you need a BGG? But Steve hasn't read the rules, so... He hasn't well, seen no, because because earlier in the stream with the matching, you were saying it was the number of dice matched, not the number of cubes. So then, no, this is clarifying that. No, I I changed that pretty quickly on that point because we had to do it last time. Um. Anyway, log the scores, and then we'll talk about things. Well, I'm glad I played Yanga. Yanga. Yeah, yeah. Um. It's not a high point scoring game. I can see why the scoreboard only goes to seventy. Well, and then you wrap, but still, John John would have gotten a lot of points. <laughs> That's Gugong. Um. So yeah. Uh. Oh, that's a good idea. Subscribing to the BGG forums for a game. I do that sometimes. Which coaster? We have a lot. The Star Wars one. It's pretty good. Um, okay, so that's Gugong. Uh, I really like it. That was my second play. Still really enjoy it. Um, Steve didn't do... Steve actually, like, beat me pretty soundly last game. So I'm interested in... What went wrong, Steve? <laughs> um, I was sort of intentionally ignoring which cards I was picking up, which meant um, most of the time the cards in my hand were too low to go to first spots on the board. Um, so I was trying to see how far I could get with just, just playing what I have and not swapping, and I ended up having to swap later in the game anyway. Um, so I think the key thing would be focus on getting the increased hand size earlier so I can get more cards because those cards that come up are potentially higher, and then focus on getting cards into my hand that are better for the future rounds. Yeah, because I I hit a lull in like rounds two and three. Well, and you forgot you like didn't even really touch this track. Well, no, I was trying to do non non upgrade stuff. Yeah, and I just didn't. Work. No, you really have to, you have to, you have to do something down here. So you yeah. either have to increase your hand size or get the double worker to really compete. 
Um, cause last game you had the double worker and you had the upgrade that lets you place a cube from your supply. Yeah. And so Steve was like doing the great wall, like almost two or three times around. Yep. So Steve was just getting a ton of points from the great wall. And I always had a cube on the great wall. So I was able to do minor intrigue stuff, but I maybe did the great wall last time, like as many times as I did this time, but last time Steve had like a great wall engine yep. um, that he was playing. Because I went, I went for boat upgrades early and that paid off um, and not getting boat upgrades early did not help me this time. So. Yeah. Um, this time I didn't start with boat upgrades. Last game I did. This time I focused very strongly on the destiny dice and matching them. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I gave second thought to the travel. Like when I was like, oh, I need to do a thing. I can't do it. I would check the travel tokens to see if they would help me. And they did. Whereas I felt like last game I played, I paid more attention to getting these upgrades like super fast. And then I did the travel tokens like as quickly as I could be to like help me build up some stuff to do this. And then I could do whatever I wanted. This game I focused more on hitting the destiny and making these decrees kind of work for me. Um, Which... May or may not have paid off. We also both spent a lot more time here this game. Last game, we were like always in the one, two, three region of this track. We hardly ever went up. Um, this game, we got like mean about the, about the end. And it was basically track. just wasted actions for both of us. Oh, I forgot that the extra life banner was up. I'm sorry. Y'all. Oh, whoops. Um, yeah, we raised a lot on extra life. It was super great. Oh, I didn't. Also, somebody did fifty it's... cents. So if you go on the website, it says seventeen fifty, so it's great, and we hit the goal, and it says you hit the goal because it rounds up. But like all the numbers that I see in the back end, or or somebody somebody was that person that did fifty cents under. Uh, yeah, on the it the banner wasn't showing up on the us cam, I think. It's not on the us cam. It's just on this cam. That's why I didn't notice it. Um. <sighs> I will also say Steve is pretty beat. He's pretty tired. Um, he was up very late. Playing spaceships. Um, but no, <laughs> so, it's... Uh, I like it. I, I like play, it a lot. I like it a lot, too. I want to play it again. I want to play with, like, different hands. Different starting hands, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want to play it a lot. I, I'm curious to see if adding a third or fourth player... It goes up to five. I think that would be too much for me. There'd be too much swapping of cards on the board, so I couldn't really do what I want. I think three or four. Four would be stretching it. I think three would be more interesting. John would hand us our butts in this game. So. Um, yeah, you were usually one step ahead of me on the matching. Like, you usually, you were consistently getting, like, an extra match for me because you'd get whichever card. Uh, one thing I noticed also, the... Um, having to discard a card from your hand to swap and get an action is if the card in your hand is one you need for the match, you can be discarding the card from your hand into here. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Kabuki. No, we were, we were done. I forgot it was up. Um, Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super jazzed with this one. He's really tired, but he is jazzed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's rough because there's like things that we like about it that um, it's so funny. Like when we when we have nitpicks to a game, it's it's we like talk about it way longer. But I feel like there's a lot to do in this game. There's a lot of mitigating. I feel the two player is really interesting. Um, I do want to try it three player, but like I don't want to try it three player at the same time because I'm like I feel like three player would not be as quick. Like, I really like this two-player, and I'm worried three-player would, like, lessen my enjoyment of it, if that makes sense. I think the thing that I would like about third-player is there's so many opportunities for interaction on the board. Mm -hmm. Um, There's the potential race to get travel tokens. There's the race for the jade, which we haven't been doing much. Um, But if there's more players getting that sheep, would be great. The Great Wall, obviously, will have more cubes. Um you're racing on this track at least somewhat um but also these cards are going to cycle more and that's going to help you match more one thing i noticed in two player especially this game is uh you have almost perfect information about the cards that are in your hand at the start of the round if you were paying attention to cards in your opponent's hand because you see what they picked up it's possible they could have drawn an extra card 
Um, and you see the cards that are on the board at the start of the round. You so can you can card count, yeah. Yeah. So you can figure out pretty quickly which cards which player need to get to get the matches. And one of the ways to screw to screw that up is with the Great Wall. Um, but the one time I was able to to time the destiny dice switching uh, to beat me to it, which was well played. Um, so it's it's hard to either get the matches or change things to your favor in two player. I think things would move more in three player because um, more people are going to be getting the cards, etc., and more cards are changing on the board. Um, so I think that's the main thing I would want to see three player is how the cards and everything feel. I feel like five might be a little chaotic, but I feel like they would just play differently. You would be pushing against other players to get like the Destiny track and the J track. And also, the, I haven't even looked at the other side of the board. I imagine there's more spots um, for many of these things. So, I don't know, let's look. Yeah, let's look at the other side. It's like a giant S. Yeah. It's a weird... Ah! Yeah! She like shoved it in. To save one cube, you destroy it a bunch. Yep. It's the, tro um, it's the trolley problem. Reenact it. So, yeah, the Great Wall's bigger. Um, um, Jade looks the same. I think that was yeah, still just Jade's the same. And Shriek Track's the same. Travel track the only thing that's different same. is there's more spots on the Forbidden City. And um, more, well, there's two harbors. Every player gets one decree spot anyway, yeah. so that's not really different. But there's two harbors, so you can pick which ah. harbor track you want to do. Um, so that it still blocks, but it's not, like, insane blocking, I guess. So, yeah. The... Okay, so those those are interesting enough changes, I think. But, yeah, I don't I don't know if I would want to play this at 5. I'd be willing to try it. Um, I would want everybody to have played it before. Yeah, um, I think I would want to try it at 3 and 4. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Vince is going to play it tonight. He's been excited about playing it. It has solo. Vince is going to play solo. Um, which is another thing that I like. I think that this is a game that uh, we'll probably happily have around because it can go up to five players. So if we just happen to have that circumstance, we can be like, oh yeah, we can play this five. Which we've um, sometimes had some like get-togethers and we have a lot of people over and we're trying to figure out a good Euro that's five. Um, and as much as we love Caverna at a certain point... It goes up to sevens. Yeah. Um... Uh, Cool. So, yeah, the back of the board is the four and five player board, whereas the front is, or the, technically the front is the five and four player board, and the back is the one through three, but I won't mm -hmm. hold that against them. Um, which is a trend that we saw yeah, this no, as uh, in. Vince is playing it in a group. He's oh, I thought doing, you were playing no, no, solo. He's doing solo to learn He's it. playing solo in an hour, and then he's going to play there. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Um, but yeah, I like it. Uh... The only, there was some, so there's a deluxified version that was on Kickstarter, and it's apparently like really nice. Um, that was earlier this year, I think uh, in the summer or something like that. And then um, Tasty Mitchell Games will have it in December, um, supposedly for a release. And then, um, yeah, the only other criticism that I've heard about this game is the art. So let's just talk about it. There was a thread. Oh my goodness. So the cover of the box depicts what is supposed to be um, somebody giving a gift to a high official in the Forbidden City. And then there's like a guard over here for the official. And this, is, this, co this cover has been updated. Um, but this was supposed to be a guard and this was supposed to be a high official and this was supposed to be an official as well. And the artist was given art direction and was using a movie um, that was set in this time period that was made in China um, that was supposed to be historically accurate to base his art off of. And um, some Chinese board gamers went on VGG and were like, hey, this art is inaccurate. It's kind of offensive. Uh, could you fix it? This isn't traditional outfits. Like, this is not what they would wear. And the artist was like, this is totally what they would wear. This is what was in this movie. So, yeah. And they pointed out very correctly, the Chinese board gamers pointed out very correctly, that the movie takes place in a prison. Like, the entire movie takes place in a prison. And so the artist had been basing his 
art for the guards and the high officials based off of what um, the prison warden and the guards at the prison would wear, not what guards and high officials in the Forbidden City would wear. So there was that. Um, And as with any forum discussion on BGG, it got salty. Uh, And the designer was kind of abrasive and nonchalant about the fact, and it upset and it ruffled a lot of people's feathers. Game Brewer changed the art. The art is no longer that weird guard. This is now this is now a woman, um, standing in the back corner, kind of in the shadow, um, and they updated the official's outfit. So the publisher did change the art to reflect to be better. It's not it's not like a hundred thousand percent accurate, but it's much better, and it's no longer a prison warden outfit and a prison card outfit. I think, what was your analogy if someone did a board game cover about like the US Congress but everybody was in prison jumpsuits? That wasn't like, me, that was somebody Congress. else. Yeah, that was somebody else. But somebody else had said that. Like if somebody had done like a thing about the founding fathers uh, and the founding of parliament and like Thomas Jefferson was wearing like a prison warden outfit and his like guard was wearing prison stripes or something like that. So the the thread is really bad um from the artist gets like super salty probably because he was given art direction and he just did what he was told for the art direction so like it's and the bgg threads are just kind of trash fires um because people get really defensive and it's one of those things where i try to keep in mind like if this was a conversation that was happening in person between two people it would probably be resolved like that but people get really defensive and they have time to brew and it's hard to inflect tone and stuff like that when it's just written word. Yep. And so kind of things just escalate. Um, Escalation of saltiness. So a yeah. lot of people kind of like blacklisted this game because of the artist's reaction. But I feel that's not fair because the publisher fixed the problem. Like the publisher was never like, F you guys, this is right. The publisher was like, Oh, and fixed it, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and so the, the people that, the original, yes, the, Vince is saying that the, if he recalls, the people that pointed out the mistake, they weren't offended. They were just like, this is inaccurate. And, and that's true. They weren't, they weren't, they didn't come off as offended, but it kind of like escalated. There's like a group. <sighs> The world is very touchy right now, and if you say, like, oh, that's inaccurate, could it be corrected? People are like, oh, you're a social justice warrior, and they just get, like, sticks up their butts about how not everything has to be PC, or it it's just, it gets stupid. It gets, honestly, just super stupid. Yeah. Um, so, the drama around this game's art got stupid for, like, no reason and there's still a lot of, like, memory of that drama hanging around, but not everybody realizes that the drama was resolved very quickly and efficiently and well done. And so there is no more drama, but most people don't know that. Like, nobody really looks up to see if the drama got resolved reasonably. Yeah. People just like to talk about the fact that there was drama. So that's one of the things I wanted to point out that, yes, they did resolve. Yes, this was an issue. No, it was not a huge of an issue as people think it is. And yes, the publisher did fix it and was very good about fixing it. So, yeah. Um, It was, uh, it was, it was stupid. You can go read the thread. It's still up on BGG. It's, it's silly. But that being said, this should not, that shouldn't in any way um, sway your opinion of the game. It hasn't swayed my opinion of the game. The game, the, they fixed the problem, right? There are other games where there's a lot more worse drama around the art and the theme where the publisher was like, what? Like, they didn't do that. They handled it. It's all good. We're all adults here. Everybody was reasonable. Everybody got what they wanted in the end, maybe. Um, so, yeah. It was, it's one of those things. But I would be remiss to not mention that because it's the one thing people think about right now if they've heard of this game that's all they can think of it right now is that the dart the artist went off on a tangent on bgg um because he was offended and it's like well 
you can, I could see why if you go and read the thread. Like, I get where both the artist is coming from and, yeah. But it's resolved and it's no longer an issue. Yeah. Except for, for people who don't want it to no longer be an issue. So, yeah. Um, the inside of the bottom of the box is a lovely illustration of the Imperial Palace with the Chinese text. Congratulations, you found the bottom. Oh, is it like under the insert, maybe? Or? I took the insert out. No, it's not in here. I don't believe you. It's a deluxe oh, edition. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a deluxe edition. Because this one, there's nothing in here. Um, all right. On that delightful note, we're going to put this game away off camera. We're going to go and rest. I don't know what you need. <laughs> water? Um, sleeps? More seltzer water. More seltzer water. Um, Maybe some Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. Doctor Who time. Uh, we will be... Streaming again on Thursday, unless we lose the fight to the cold. Um, so we'll be streaming Thursday. Uh, I don't know what we're going to stream yet. Thursday, we get to pick. Tuesdays are patrons pick, my patrons pick. So um, I will post a poll probably on Thursday for the patrons to pick what it is they would like us to stream. Um, in a lot of those polls, I've been having Ceylon. But Ceylon is no longer in those polls, and if you're a patron, you can find out why. And if you're not a patron, you'll just never know. Or you could just become a patron. Um, your support really does help. It's just a dollar a month, um, and you can set it's a minimum or a maximum of a dollar a month. And that really does help continue. Um, this helps us continue doing this. Um, so yeah, and you'll find out more why it really helps in a patron post, which is kind of, yeah. But um, Did you say it was time for that game to Ceylon? so we'll see you all on thursday um but i will be streaming tomorrow while i paint the figures from grim forest so um a painted copy of grim forest was won in our charity auction and that i haven't painted that copy yet so um this week i am painting that copy of grim forest and you can watch me you can come hang out with me while i paint uh, during the day. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow I'll be painting that. And you can come and hang out. And yeah, it'll be midday. So today I started at like 1, so around that time. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you're watching it on Twitch, uh, make sure you give it a heart. If you'd like to see more or make sure you miss or you don't miss out on future streams, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified sometimes when we go live. Otherwise, uh, I hope you have a good evening. Thank you, chatters, for hanging out with us. And we'll see you all on a future stream. If your name is Steve, you might want a cup of coffee. I think you just can't go to bed, babe. I think it's just time mm. to go to bed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Good night. All right. Good night.